Yeah. There's some room. There's some room over there. There's some room over you here. Can, you can sit over there on that side. <laughs> Howdy, y'all. My name's Sinanthrope. I'm from Northwest Arkansas, and this is the Other Kin Theory Non-Human Information Panel. If you're not looking for this, you're in the wrong room, and you might want to get out of here because it's going to get a little bit weird. <laughs> All right. So my name's Sinanthrope, or Sin, or Kila. I have a bunch of different names. I'm from Northwest Arkansas, from the Ozarks. Um, I'm, a South, I'm a Southeastern Coyote Therian, which is this sort of get up that I have on it today. Uh, I'm also an Amari Victo Therian, SCP 2547 Fiction Can, and I've been non human since 2016. Those are sort of big words. We'll get into that. All right. Uh, so, what is non humanity? Other Kin itself, it, uh, so Other Kin is sort of an umbrella term that envelops uh, anybody that believes that they are non human on a non physical level. Some people might contest on that the other community sort of figures about um, a lot of definitions and stuff. So, but generally, umbrella term. Uh, is, a Therian is somebody that has an earthly sense of identity, um, so be it like an animal, um, some mythical creature like a chimera or something like that, or something else. Uh, fiction kin is somebody that believes they are a fictional character or a fictional species on a non-physical level. So you could identify as Nikita Pomida or something, or you could identify as an entire um, species with, a, sorry, an entire fictional species. Um, member of a fictional species, let me get that right. Uh, non-human is also a sort of umbrella term that encompasses anybody who identifies as something non-human on a non-physical level. It's important to note that this is always non-physical, otherwise you'd go under the realms of clinical lycanthropy, which is something you kind of need help for. So, um, non-human symbolism. So, this one on the right, this is let me get this thing on. This thing, <laughs> uh, this is the septogram, which is uh, also known as the L star, face star, or other things. Uh, it was originally put into place and started use by the Elf Queen's Daughters back in 1972 through about 1969. Nobody really knows exactly when it was, um, but that's sort of like the modern otherkin symbol for today. Uh, this one right here is the Theta Delta symbol. That is the one that Therians use. Uh, the Theta literally just stands for the TH in Therian. Um, whereas the Delta part of it stands for change and shifting like stuff like that, which we're going to get into as well. Uh, this right up here, the Theta Delta right here, is something you might see in somebody's Twitter bio, their uh, name or something. That's a sort, of, a sort of a shorthand to denote whether you're Therian or not. So. Um, anything else I have to talk about? Oh, and this that I, I've forgotten about every time I rehearse this panel. Uh, this is the non human unity flag. I created this back in May 9th, 2020. Um, it combines both the, theor uh, the theory and theta delta and the other conceptogram uh, into a sort of unity thing. It's called the non human unity flag. Uh, it's supposed to be re uh, recognize unity between all three, uh, most of the communities. The green on the flag stands for Earth people with Earth identities or other animal like identities. The white stands for anybody with any sort of non-human identity, and the purple stands for, for other kind. Excuse me while I adjust my mask, because this thing keeps on slipping down, it's going to get annoying if it goes on. All right. And agency of identification. So, agency of identification is sort of why somebody would identify as Ethereum. Um, so, some people might believe that it's a spiritual thing for them, like you might be put in the wrong body. Um, say you're not supposed to be in this body and you're a coyote. Never heard of that before. Um, but, uh, and then there's also psychological, which is identity born of imprinting. So you watch too many dog cartoons as a kid, that gets in your brain, and just sort of rots your brain from the inside out until you're just basically an animal. Um, and then there's other, a wide range of other experiences, like experiential, philosophical, behavioral, emotional, etc. That just goes on forever and ever because every single person's identity and experience is different. And it's good to be able to respect that. So. Uh, shifting and what it feels like. Shifting is a little bit hard to explain, but it's something that happens to some theorians and not others. Uh, phantom shifting is about the same phenomenon as phantom limb syndrome, so if you ever get like an arm cut off or something like that, if somebody were to hit that, whenever the limb is actually not there, somebody might, an amputee might feel that. It's a very similar thing for theorians, but instead of a limb being lost, it's sort of like the map of where that would have been. Um, so it kind of feels like if you have paws or something, it kind of feels like light clothing over that, or like you're wearing a bursty glove. I read. <laughs> um, and then there's physical shifting. Wait, oh, no, sorry. Make it over mental shifting first. Um, so mental shifting is even harder to explain. It's a temporary change in mindset to thinking more instinctually as your kin type would. Uh, it can range from like non-verbal behavior and stuff like that. It's basically whatever. You, so if you've ever been in the pup community or anything, it's basically the same thing as pup head space. It's a lot like that. 
Um, and then there's physical shifting, which unfortunately is not at all possible. You cannot turn into it to an actual animal as much as I wish I could. So, um, yeah. Uh, as for the other ones, they can both be involuntary invo and involuntary. It's sort of hard to trigger shifts until you've done them enough. Because um, you sort of don't forge those neural pathways in your head into how that sort of stuff feels. Um, there's other experiences that could be related to that, but I'm not going to say them because they're not. That's not suited for an 18 not 18 panel. All right, and then subcategories of identity. This is sort of getting into the niche and gritty stuff. You'll probably hear these terms a few times if you're ever in the community. It's good to go over them just so you know them. Uh, Confurian is somebody that does not experience mental shifts and is always in a constant state between human and animal mentally, but this does not change, which is the only difference between that and Sun Therians or Vassal Therians who are on a sliding scale between human and animal mentally, and uh, shifts do not occur as suddenly as it would be if you were just a regular Therian. So. Uh, Cladotherian is somebody that identifies as a clade of animals, so say you feel like you're every single domestic dog, um, or if you feel like you might be just generally a tiger. It's kind of hard to pin that sort of stuff down sometimes. Uh, Polykin refers to somebody that has more than one kin type. I'm that because I'm like 40 different things. Um, and then there's also Fictotherians, which I also am, member who identifies, somebody who identifies as a member of a fictional species. Um, my other identity is, well, one of three. My other identity is uh, an Amaran, which is a species of fox, like an anthro fox from the Star Wars universe. So it's created by Furry. It's pretty cool. Um, it's an extended universe, though. So, and then Myth Theory, and somebody that identifies as a mythical creature, um, this differentiate. Some people might want to make this differentiation whenever they're referring to themselves as a theory, because it might make them more comfortable or something. But it's not really needed. Um, some people that are sort of hardline Therians might tell you that theory only, only, only means earthly animal, which is wrong because it was literally coined by somebody with a mythical sense of identity. So don't let, don't take any print from anybody. So um, Kenning versus other kin. So this is a little bit difficult to get into. Um, Kenning is relating to a character or using them otherwise to portray yourself online which is different than other kin. So if you've ever heard anybody say, I kin something, it may or may not have been other kin. And that sort of becomes an issue whenever you're talking about stuff like this, it's good difficult to determine, determine what vocabulary you're using to identify, to refer to what. So if somebody says, oh, I'm Nagito Palmaida, and you're like, oh, I am somebody else from the Danganronpa franchise, I knew them, it's like, I would like to like communicate with you about so It's like, oh, I'm not actually, I much relate to them. And that sort of becomes a little bit of a risk because you can't identify who's other kin and who's kinning. So that's something to know. Um, but we have created vocabulary so that people you can uh, so that you can differentiate between people who are kidding and people who are actually other kin. Some of those some of those um, definitions include otherhearted, which is a strong or fundamental connection to a being. Um, so like say you feel like you would have been or like gotten along with a crypto the super dog or something like that, that would be otherhearted. Uh, coping link is a voluntary identity with any with an, as or with an entity for coping reasons. So this would be a voluntary identity, whereas other kin is, heavy disclaimer, mostly involuntary. Some people do voluntarily identify as other kin. I'm not going to police anything here. So, um, sympath refers to people that heavily relate, heavily, heavily relate to, uh, but no, do not identify as a fictional character. So, um, after that is how to know if you're non-human. This is also a really, really big question, and this takes a lot of introspection. Uh, to actually figure this out, but in my opinion, non-humanity is largely about the self-actualization between you, your environment, and like the experiences and how you live it, and like what you live in, and what makes you you. So, did you feel strangely at home when playing the dog in the house as a kid? Uh, did you feel like just seeing a person transform into an animal in a movie make you incredibly jealous? Um, does, do you just like wish that werewolves would just come sweep you out of the forest and make you one of their own and just live there forever? And that's sort of, the, those are some good uh, good identifiers to figure out if you're other kin or not. Um, there's a lot more to that, but to me, the true peak of non-humanity is like finding what you are in confidence and letting that out wildly as possible. Uh, expressing it with little to no inhibitions as long as you know who's watching. So, yeah. Uh, discovery of self ties into our next sub uh, subject, which is where we can trace other kin back to. 
All right. So, um, modern lineage of the Other King community can be traced back to the Elf Queen's daughters. This was a early uh, early 70s, late 60s um, group of uh, pagans that sort of idolized the Tolkien universe and the elves that were created through the Tolkien universe. They were basically Tolkien elves. Um, but the main two, Arwen and Eleanor, the ones that sort of founded the Elf Queen's daughters. They had communication with a spirit that at one point told them through a Ouija board, somewhere between 71 and 72, uh, to create the other, well, to create the, um, queen elves, the queen elves' daughters. So seeing that the other kin community can kind of be traced back to that moment, and if that hadn't happened, we wouldn't be here today, which is kind of cool. Um, but they began publishing uh, stuff in the, or just the Elven Magic Blood Letters in the Green Egg, Green Egg Pagan Magazine, which was a, a magazine at the time. Um, and there was one person, Zardoa, who had previously lived with another elf that he was married to and then wasn't. Um, and they, uh, he didn't really pick up on the fact that he was an elf to begin with, but sort of had inclinations to the fact that, hey, I think there's something else a little bit off about me. So he found out about the Queen Elf's Daughters in local vortices, which is the elven word for covens, uh, around him. And he went to one of the local vortices. And this sounds like a whole fantasy world. This was happening in Illinois. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, um, but he went to look one of the local vortices. And in one of those vortices, he met like, the original Queen Elf's Daughters. And upon, let me read this correctly off. Uh, and upon finally reaching and like conversing with other elves about how like what it feels like to be elvish, they finally clicked for him that this is what he's been waiting for his entire life, and he broke down crying because he knew that's what he was. And I think that's a very reasonable, sorry not reasonable, but very relatable experience for most other kings. I can like, I know most people have had a very similar experience to that. So just that intense feeling of knowing what you are suddenly. It doesn't have to be that, but you might just know what you are the entire time. Um, Elfkin Digest was another uh, mailing list that was sort of created after the uh, Green Egg Pagan magazine publications and stuff like that to keep on, to keep in touch with people online and around the world. Um, the word other kind, other kind was first coined in April, 19, April 18th, 1990 on that mailing list. And that was to denote anybody that was not Elfkin because people were getting a mouthful of saying, oh, dragon, uh, orc, etc. kin, it's just other kind. Just leave it. And eventually, um, the D was dropped off of Otherkin, which was on July 9th, which is why we celebrated this Otherkin Day today. So, that was a big panel, or big slide. Uh, theory and history. So, theory and history can mostly be traced back to old dot board dot werewolves. Um, this was a Usenet board from the time when you were using your phone to get on the internet. Um, they first started talking about, so this board started in 92. People first started talking about feeling like they were a werewolf in around 93. Um, that led to the first Howl, which is a gathering of Therians and stuff like that. There's other names for Howls and other gatherings of Therians, like a hiss, slither, etc. for cats, snakes. There's a lot of different terminology. Um, but this led to the first Howl in 1994, which was celebrated, which was on the first full moon of November, which is when, uh, the, which is when Therian Three Day is celebrated. Howls themselves are one of the greatest ways to be in the flesh or for uh, you get to know each other, uh, howl at the moon, leap over bonfires, and generally just sp uh, sharing the experience and what makes us all uh, non-human, um, farthest away from civilization as possible, and it's just a great recharge for the animal side. So, um, yeah, okay, I think that's all I have for that panel. Yeah, so non-humanity must seem like a wonderful experience all the time, right? Wrong. Um, <laughs> so, species dysphoria describes a type of bodily dysphoria arising from the perception that one is not in the correct body of their own species. About 75% of non-humans experience this, and it's pretty distressing. But um, it's also academically recognized as being studied by First Science, also known as the Anthrop Independent Anthropomorphic Research Project, pretty sure. Um, but yes. And more than half of Therians find it distressing to the point where it's difficult to adapt to, which is why we have things like species that will get you species euphoria. So, species euphoria can include things like body modification, like if you're getting like fangs uh, implanted, or you can get like angel fang piercings to look like teeth. Uh, camping and hiking is one of my favorite ways to do it because you get as close to being an animal as possible and as dirty as possible. Um, and then kinside paraphernalia, stuff like this. Um, this is incredibly euphoric out for me because it's just people see me as an animal and that's all it is. 
Um, also, spiritual and animistic practice can kind of get you closer to the animals you might be want to work, wanting to work with. Uh, really good book to sort of get into the start and like to get into animal magic and animism and stuff like that is Blood and Bur uh, no Blood and Bone, Fang and Fur, Blood and Bone by Luca Greenwolf. So that's on Etsy for like fifteen dollars. You can download it your phone today and read it over on the It's great. Um, pronouns and gender. Huge one for being acknowledged by other people. I use it's it's, it's pronouns because I'm not human. I don't want to be addressed as human, you know. So it's a little bit dehumanizing, but that's the point. I'm also agender because I have no sense of what gender is, and I am an animal. I don't care. So, um, but yeah. And beyond that, acknowledgement from outsiders and stuff is also a really really great thing just to like take you for from other people being recognized as a dog with dog friends. Incredible experience. So. Uh, community warnings. So this is not a fun panel. To, this is not a fun slide to make, but I think it's important. Uh, Hearing Guide is one of the largest forums on the internet at the moment, and they have been known throughout the community for both cases of sexual, uh, animal sexual abuse and child sexual abuse, as well as racism, transphobia, from both the moderators from the site. I can attest to this personally. If you guys need the card link or whatever, catch me outside of here, and I can get it to you so you can actually see what's going on there. Uh, Razgriz is a little bit of an older cult. Um, which is weird to say. But Razgriz Raz is a shifter cult that believes you can physically shift um, and has written shifting oh, manuals to where you can like, progressively shift more parts of your body that include physical harm. So don't do that, please. Um, and there's also other piece shifting cults like that. But in general, if you ever join a group and they're trying to force you to accept their ways and in turn from acceptance from them, run away. Do not interact with people. Other good communities, though. So, Non-Human National Park is a forum that is run by two of my friends, House of Pamiras and uh, Bruce Page. I love them both very much, and they've done a great job with making that community. It's got some great, uh, great discussions and stuff to go on on it. Um, other can twit, um, which is a hashtag that I didn't really create, but sort of spawned and I took advantage of. Um, is something you can find a lot of people tweeting on. Uh, at other can twit is something that I do run. That's basically just a mirror of the other pin, uh, the hashtag other pin, uh, hashtag other pin twit, hashtag theory, and etc. Um, there's also Discord servers and stuff you can go to. Uh, Tumblr has a ton of really cool other pin on it as well. It's very chill. And othercon.org is an online convention that I help run, and I'm sort of the voice of. So I highly suggest you guys go there as well. It's great to have some like really in-depth panels about theory and topics. And they also have a YouTube channel, so if you go to othercon on YouTube, they'll show up. Uh, and shameless self-plug, I'm SCP2547 on Twitter if you want to follow me. I talk about other stuff in insane amounts. I need to get my brain out of my phone. Um, but that's never going to happen. But yeah, other than that, my bibliography, I do need to note um, this. The Otherkin Timeline by Orion Scribner, huge help in making all of this. So I credit a lot of that to Orion Scribner. She also has, uh, they also have, a um, series of comics called Very There, which really, really reflects some really great um, other than feelings. So, I don't know how they suggest checking those out. It's not legible. What isn't? Yeah, it isn't legible. <laughs> you guys, do you care about my sources? You, are you actually to go and like type these links? Yeah, let me screenshot them. Um, yeah, anyway. Was that book you mentioned? What's up? What was the book, what? What was that book you mentioned about reading about what? other things? Uh, blood and, uh, Thing and Fur, Blood and Bone by Luca Greenwald. Thing What's up? Blood and um, I think I speak for everybody in here, like, I want to be able to connect with someone on a soul level, uh -huh. and whenever I hop on Tinder, like, in full costume, like, I'm just getting rejected by baddies, like, oh left God, and right. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> is there a Tinder for, like, people, like, furries, where, like, you know, Twitter. we can match and stuff I mean, like Bark is a thing. The closest the you got is Bark. Yeah. 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 It's about we, how does that yeah. work? Yeah. It's, it's on the App Store. We're just it's like, like, it's app store. Store. It, it connects to your Telegram and stuff, so. Any other questions? Yeah. See, I'm not a, I'm not a dog. What's up, man? Where, where, where would I obtain a flag like that? Uh, I have a thread on how to get one of these flags on my pin on my Twitter. I can, like, send it to you or something. <laughs> oh, crap, because uh, I don't have Twitter. You don't have Twitter? Um, see me after the panel. I can, go for, I can like, show you how to do it. So, okay. Yeah. Does anybody want to, like, you know, like, maybe, like, you know, Go on a date with me? Like, no. <laughs> trying to like shoot my shot like that a book. Any other questions? Hey, man, you miss all the shots you're taking. Bye. Bye. You're right. I give you more credit than me for saying.
You're braver than I am. I don't see a lot of panels like this, and I think it's probably because there's a lot of fear of persecution and yeah. um, mistreatment. Any advice you have for other people about like connecting with others? Yeah. So the question was, um, I feel like a lot of panels like this come under scrutiny because it feels like there's a lot of fear of uh, persecution, and that's why people don't see these panels as much. Honestly. I have gone out in the forest in this thing, and the most people call me is a raccoon. So, uh, <laughs> it's wrong, but at least it's not being called something bad. So, um, most of the time I don't really have any issue with people. So, I just live like the place free if you feel like you can. So, experience I've had with uh, being myself, just something like expressing myself with like other people around has been that Burning Man regional event. Yeah. Really? Burning Man so, itself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, like there's yeah. regionals. All over the world. I would love to go to Burning Man in this, but there's I'm one here in mine. Georgia. Yeah, you would burn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's 98 degrees. I mean, I mean, just take out everything. I, I go, I go, uh, I go openly, theory, and like I, I tell everyone about it. I educate people. Yeah. And they are. And I feel like in a lot of places most, like that, people are more open-minded about being theory and stuff like yeah. that. They are the most widely validated community of the world. Incredible. What's up? I thought about your panel presentation. Um. It might be better defined as modern theory, theory uh, other than because the concept is not unfamiliar to indigenous peoples in various ways. Yeah, no, it is It is the modern aspect. Of, it's more of a modern aspect of theory anthropy. And, uh, there is, of course, cultural legends within of theory anthropy that go way back. And like Mozart apparently thought he was a cat. Yeah. I yeah. do not tell if that article is satire or not, but apparently it's not going to be back here. I can't believe it's not. Yeah, it's yeah. canon. It's not. 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 This is actually, I've actually, I'm actually really interested in all this other stuff that I've heard here because I have practically printed the internet, like, uh -huh. and I've heard of raspberries and the, the werewolf form and all that other stuff, but there is a ton of stuff here that I didn't know. Uh-huh. Like yeah. the stuff dating back to the 70s and the 90s, yeah. that was pieces missing from my information yeah. because I found stuff that was on, uh... What the heck was it called? Um, that that web ring that got turned off. That's on the Wayback Machine now. Uh huh. Yes. I don't scroll the Wayback Machine as often as I. Well, like no. To this is when this yeah. stuff. Was, oh, Geo Cities. When it was Geo still out. Yeah. But I, I practically printed the internet. And a lot of this did happen on Geo Cities. Yeah. I mean, I practically printed the internet like way back when. Yeah. I mean, I still have all this stuff. Yeah. I try to cover a lot of the stuff in the 70s because I honestly think that's some of the coolest parts. Because yeah, it just sounds like a fantasy it's, novel, but it's, it's just not as real. Because it's really this cool. is stuff I've never and like heard a of. lot of the original Elf Queen Sauters are still around, and the Silver Elves, which is a sort of offshoot of the Elf Queen Sauters that existed in the 70s, uh, Silver Elves are still around, and they're still making publications and stuff today. And so, and also it is worth noting, uh, the few of the original uh, Queen Elf's daughters were trans. It's been clear all the way through, and sixty and like about sixty percent of theorians on are non-binary, and that is not including binary trans people. So, it's over like seventy percent uh, clear. What's that's up? what I find fascinating because of the, that stuff. Because I, have, in all the years that I've like been researching this stuff, that was the stuff I was never able to do. Yeah. So I find that incredibly fascinating because I like historical um, stuff. I find that very fascinating. I have one question. What's your name? Uh, Cypher. Okay, cool. Hi, Cypher. What's up? Um, I was just going to mention, like, I have one of the books published by the Silver Elves. Uh-huh. Um, I would have it, like, on me, actually. On you? Sick. Really? Um, so but they're main, like, they pretty much only sell through Amazon, but I think the books are, like, all, like, $15 or so. Like, yeah, they're, they're pretty, pretty affordable nice. and, like, you know... Hmm. It's pretty and inexpensive. They have different books on like they have like they publish like a new book like every year or something. So there's like 50 books. That's and, sick. Um, they're like there's there's ones on everything. Like the one I have is about um sort of creating and living your own personal myth. Like uh -huh. it's more of like mythical theory and spiritual theory. And That's cool. Book. But it's published by Zardoa and like. Is Zardoa um, still around in publishing? Yeah, yeah. Sick. Still writing and he um he even talks goes into some of the details about his life uh -huh. in the book. Like really cool. That's so cool. 
Yeah, they also, Silver Elves have also published all of the maps. Oh, I say all of, it probably is not because archival people have not found them all. But um, they've published, I think, most of the Elven Elf love letters in uh, book form at this point, and yeah, the Silver yeah. Elves have that. So, that was your, uh, oh, that's okay. less than 30 minutes. Lordy. Yeah, um, any more, any other questions? Yeah, I want to talk about something. Can we talk about substance? Uh, substance. Like, uh, because I found that like certain substances really help me shift. Yeah. yeah. We'll leave it. Substances to keep this eight. To keep okay. Yeah, no, I just wanted to have yeah. that. Um, yeah. Definitely, substances will get me uh, more loose brain to the animal side of things than anything. Um, certain ones that are leaf based work better than others. <laughs> uh, choose your plan. What's up? Right back here. Yes. Is there a large overlap between the other? Uh, the question was if there a large overlap between the other kind of theory community and yes. Um, back in the early 2000s, they were sort of at odds with each other, but at this point, nobody cares. Um, so at this point, if there is like a large overlap between them. That's why I was saying if the other kind is sort of seen in a, as an umbrella term that uh, that theory fits under, but some people might not consider that. So, yeah. I've done a lot of pagan meet and greets. Uh -huh. um, it seems to me that other tends to also overlap in, in I don't know if this has been your experience, but with paganism as well. Yeah, I mean, like it started in paganism, so yeah, I'm pagan, so I have one question right there. What's up? Yeah, I have a question. I know you always typically Therians associate with things like wolves and stuff, but does it seem like associate with like, like a cockroach or something like that? I've seen, so the question was, I understand that Therians usually identify, I identify as wolves and stuff like that, but is there anybody that's been a cockroach? I've seen a bee, I've seen a fly, I think. Um, there's some wacky ones out there, not wacky, but you know what I'm saying, just sort of out, out world ones, yeah. Um, that would be, that I have met, so I could say yes, yeah. All right. Anybody else? What's up? I just wanted to like put it out there. Like, has anyone like heard of any like howls that are in the sort of Florida or Georgia kind of like howls? I would. So a howl was like an old form. Like, oh, there are a lot of theories in Florida. I'm like, I live there. Where are they? Hello. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and everything is from like 2014 because you know. I haven't been able to find. I know one in the Jacks area. Are you in Jacksonville? No. I was gonna say they're here if you want to meet them, but yeah. Oh, that's cool though. Yeah. I need to find a reviewer. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I want to go to one house. I'd like to go to one too. I've never been able to. I want to have a house. I need to know who your maker is. Made for you. Made for when there was one around, so, I couldn't drive yet. Just yeah. giving a totally unbiased opinion that coyotes are the best. Yes. Oh! <laughs> coyotes are the best. I've right. never uh, met a coyote in life, so I can't say where you want to. We're just <laughs> such lovable scams. Yeah, they're all like, they all eventually become like best friends. <laughs> all right, any other questions? Okay, so. Right now. Has anybody ever used hypnosis for? We have a question. Yes. Yeah. Uh, question. Yeah. Uh, uh, odd question. You mentioned spatial dysphoria, species dysphoria. Uh -huh. Do you have any information on how far along the research into that is? Uh, I do not, but I do know people that are members of the research group. Um, so I don't know where it is on it, but I do. There is some statistics that first science has taken out for conventions. Okay. I think that does show how many people that have species. It always to worry seems about, like the website that I pull up when I search for first science is a little bit like not super active and not being updated. Is yeah, there a I, resource for them? I think it. I, it might, I think it might be a. IARP.org. I'm not yeah. entirely sure. It's either First Science or the Independent Anthropomorphic Research Project. Find it under either of those. So yeah, I, I ask because I spoke with a psychiatrist about 10 years ago uh -huh. uh, about, well, it was about, uh, about that topic specifically, and they said they personally were very hopeful that it would be recognized, but it could be 15 to 20 years off before the larger medical community will even yeah. consider it. Yeah, given a lot of what people just consider mental illness and throw to the side, theory of three is probably going to fall into the bus at some point. Um, I do know that there are several cases of people that were actually clinical lycanthropes. I'll get into what that is in a second. But people that were clinical lycanthropes that are literally just textbook theorians. So uh, clinical lycanthropy is a uh, is a mental illness to where you actually have the illusion that you are a werewolf and that you like are actually transforming into one um, instead of 
the, like, the knowledge that you still are physically human. So um, there are levels of it as well. The second, there is, the so secondary clinical lycanthropy is where you just see yourself as one, which I'm kind of jealous of, I will be honest. But um, yeah. you like will see yourself as a real, but still understand that's not actually reality. So um, I've known a few people that identified as theorians that had that experience as well. So there's also visual shifting, which I've heard people experience once or twice. Mm -hmm. I've never had it happen to me before.